Hey everybody, it's Peter from the Kia Hyundai channel. Welcome to our live video series. It is January 31st, 2022. And if you're watching live with us, then thanks for joining us. If you're not watching live for us, what we're gonna do here is we're gonna talk about the Kia K5 and we're gonna go in depth with this car. So we're gonna spend about a half an hour going through this car and because we're live, we're gonna take your questions as well. So if you're not live with us and you just wanna to get to that content, you can skip ahead to the three minute mark if you want. And in the meantime, we're gonna let our live audience build. We're gonna talk about some news and some notes and we're gonna talk about uh, what's coming up uh, in February this month as well. So let me flip the camera around here, if it'll work with me here, and we'll jump around to, this is how to join us live. If you go to our YouTube channel, which just looks just like that, if you refresh the page at exactly two o'clock Eastern time, which is what we're doing right now, uh, you will see that the main video disappears and the live video, the current live video replaces it on the page. We're going to click into that if you watch the ad uh, or you can do what I'm going to do. You can just skip the ad, but we're going to run uh, a quick ad for the dealers that support us. Brantford Hyundai, uh, Brantford Kia and Owen Sound Hyundai are the three dealers that support this channel. If you want to buy a car in Ontario, those are the three dealers to talk to. You can reach me through the description below. I will put a link in there as soon as I've done this video and that'll be how to reach out to me and I'm struggling today, it's a Monday, we'll get this together. I'm, I'm much better with the vehicles than with running ads. All right, so what's going on? So first of all, the vehicle that we're talking about today, you guys suggested this in a poll. We did a poll the other day about the Sorento PHEV or the K5, and the Sorento PHEV won that poll by a substantial margin, and then I checked it at around like 11 o'clock that night, and you guys had 51% in favor of this car. So we promised we'd have it in detail. We did take this car out last week or so in the snow and talked about the all wheel drive system, but I feel like I left out so many details on this car that you should know about. And we really haven't covered this car a lot because it's been, um, it's been done before or it's been missing for a while. So we're gonna talk about this car in detail and uh, that's how we got to this. So you can find me on Instagram if you wanna find me to participate in future polls to select that for yourself or to select the vehicle for yourself. Uh, what's going on? A lot of news about waiting still. There's really not a whole lot I can tell you about uh, wait times. Things are picking up. We do have um, the Kona N, which is a vehicle that you guys have been asking about. Uh, we will have that here in the future. So um, that is available uh, in the coming, well, it should be here in February as well. And again, February is traditionally the Canadian International Auto Show, which has been canceled due to COVID but we expect to see a lot of those introductions and a lot of that information that comes out around the auto show time to come out this month. And uh, so we'll cover that in detail here because you can't go to the show, you might as well watch it here. So do me a favor, if you're a regular with us, hit the like button, we're way down on likes right now. So uh, if you're a regular, just hit the like button. If you're not a regular, I'm totally willing to try to earn your like and hopefully at some point uh, you can find something worth liking in this video and we'll go from there. All right, three minutes in, here we go. Like I mentioned off the top, this is the Kia K5. This happens to be an EX model, and we've driven this out in the snow last week, but we didn't really do a full uh, full detail. So again, this is the Canadian version of the EX. Now, I know EX and GT Line are kind of mixed up in the Canadian American versions, but hopefully you'll stay along for this one, and we'll talk about all the details and features, uh, because this is a pretty good value vehicle for an all-wheel drive midsize car, and I do think it can replace, in many cases, an all-wheel drive midsize um, midsize uh, SUV as well. So we're gonna talk about that. And like I said, we're gonna spend about a half an hour going through this vehicle. If we go beyond half an hour, uh, then we're taking your questions and we've gone off topic. So feel free to grab your uh, beverage, grab your snacks and we'll go through it. All right. So jumping in, first thing I wanna talk about is the key. I always sort of start with the key just because I wanna show it to you on the side. Uh, panic button on the bottom, the hold button there for the trunk, lock and unlock on top, and there is a remote start button on the key fob. So keyless remote. Now the big thing with these keyless remotes is um, you can press the start button, start the car. You can press a little button on the door right here to um, unlock just the driver's door or all the doors. But what a lot of people forget is, well, you can do a couple things. You can come up near the trunk here and there's a button back there that you can press in the center underneath the logo, underneath the uh, reflectors there uh, that can open the trunk. But what a lot of people forget is you can simply approach the vehicle. You can see there's no buttons by my fingers here. This is look like, feel like I'm performing a magic trick. You can see I'm not touching anything. A lot of competitors, they make you wave your foot underneath the trunk in order to uh, touchless open the trunk or underneath the bumper to touchless open the trunk. You don't have to do that. This is a proximity key. In other words, the car can sense when this key is within close proximity of the vehicle. So what we're going to do is, if I've done this correctly, I've locked the car. You have to be away from the car for about 45 seconds or so. And then I can keep this in my hand simply by approaching the back of the vehicle. The lights are going to blink five times in three seconds and 
the trunk releases on its own. I did not have to pop this out of my pocket. You can turn that on, you can turn it off, it doesn't matter uh, how you do it, but it's one of the benefits of having these proximity keys. And on the SUVs, this only happens on the powered tailgates, but on this sedan, you don't need a powered tailgate, you just approach it and it opens. Now again, if you don't want it to do that, you can turn it off, you can step away, you can, there's all kinds of ways to deal with that. But while we're here, let's take our little teddy bear test and we'll do a little uh, teddy bear. The reason I think this is better than, I think somebody said the leg swipe, but is it faster than a leg swipe? So here's the thing with the leg swipe. Is it faster? Uh, I think it's just as quick you approach, but here's the thing. If I'm carrying a bunch of luggage and I'm standing on one foot, I don't know where you guys live, but this is an amazing winter car. I don't like standing on one foot, waving on snow and ice to a sensor when it's snowing and cold outside. I just want to be able to approach the car, key in my pocket, stand with two feet on the ground, be safe, and the trunk opens. To me, that's a better system than standing on one foot and trying to find the exact spot where you're waving away. It just doesn't make sense to me. It's not something that I would want to do. So I think it is better, and I think it works very well. Is this roomier than the Forte? Absolutely. It is roomier than the Forte, and that's part of what we're going to talk about today is how the size of this is. So when I show you the size here, we always talk about something like a Sorento, a mid-size SUV, having a two teddy bear trunk. We have our little teddy bear there. You can easily fit the second teddy bear uh, in here as well. So where the Sorento obviously wins is you could stack more teddy bears on top. But when we talk about trunk space, a lot of people go with an SUV because of that long floor, that big trunk space. This has really just as long as a floor. It also has all-wheel drive. It also gets better fuel efficiency, but it's very comfortable for um, longer trips. If you have longer items, you can also fold down the seats here. So you've got the pull tab here and the same thing on the other side. It is a 60-40 split down there. So uh, you can see 40 side here, 60 side there, and you can fit quite a bit in the trunk. So let's close that down. Once we close it, the trunk automatically locks again because we've never taken the key out of our pocket. Oh, poor teddy bear here. Teddy bear just fell on the floor. So bear with me for a second. We'll pick him up. All right, there we go. Teddy bear just looks like he's had a rough day, but He'll be fine. He's getting a little dirty. All right, so we come back here and now let's hop in the driver's side here. And when we talk about this car, let's just quickly show you where we're at in the price point because I think price point matters with this. Um, let me just come over here and we're gonna go show you price point. So 29,595 is where this car starts. 32,995 is where we're at with this car. And that's what I think is important. When you start comparing SUV pricing at 32,95 midsize SUV pricing with this kind of passenger space, you're not gonna get as much options at 32,995. Then 36,395 for the GT line. There is a GT above that, but these are the ones with the same engine and all wheel drive. So let's jump in here now. Again, to unlock the door, a single tap here unlocks just the driver's door, or if I want, I can have it unlock every door. We'll unlock all the doors just in case. Down here, powered seats. It is a leather seat. I believe it's an artificial leather. I have to double check that, but I think it's, yeah, it feels like our artificial leather. Uh, so powered seats with the power lumbar, and uh, one thing I really like, and I know that not everybody does, is there's this wood look trim here. And this wood look trim is not wood, but it has a texture to it. It feels like real wood and it's super cool. It's not like those like 1980s Jaguars where it's like that burled walnut and it's probably real wood and it's super smooth and shiny. It doesn't feel like that, but it looks super cool in person. And then it touches, like it has a nice feel to it as well. And you can see how it just kind of blends in the doorway. I think it looks really sharp on this car and I think it really makes it stand out in person. So um, yeah, it just, to me, it makes the car feel a little bit more expensive than it probably is. And uh, it's one of those things where I know on video, a lot of people say, ooh, I don't like the wood. Yeah, some people aren't gonna like it, but I think it's pretty cool and it does look pretty cool in person to me. All right, turning on the car, just to the on position, not starting it because we are indoors right now. Uh, left side tachometer, right side speedometer, and then you've got in the center, that all wheel drive graph or just about anything you want. So you've got fuel efficiency here. We can cycle through those. You've got a drive mode um, thing. So when we have it in, for instance, the smart mode, which we can put it in right now. Uh, there we go, smart mode right there. What it will say is, if it comes back, there we go, smart normal. So it could say smart eco, it could say smart sport. And then this bar graph, it'll when you start driving, it'll sit in the center. And if you're driving more economically, it'll lean towards the economical side. If you start driving athletically or dynamically, it will move across to the, that side there. And in the smart mode, it will change the modes for you to normal or sport all on its own. So if you want just sport mode, have it uh, peppy on the throttle, you can keep it in sport mode. 
Normal mode's there. Smart mode is great for fuel efficiency, so you can use that fuel efficiency to your advantage, but if you get into the throttle, it'll jump to the mode you want, and then, of course, you can customize things. So, for instance, uh, sport-feeling steering, but uh, normal for the rest of the vehicle. And then, of course, we have the snow mode, which we used the other day when we drove this car out in the snow. So, super good uh, system there of drive modes. And again, just tons and tons of information in the center display here. So, you can go across to your lane-keeping assist, your driver attention uh, level. If you have a smooth, your smart cruise control, we'll have some information here when you get into that as well. Well, and then of course you have tons of settings here that you can adjust and we'll go through a video sometime of all the different things you can do in that settings area as well and uh, while we're here tire pressure monitors they will display every single tire exactly the psi so not just a tire warning if it's low it will tell you exactly what the PSI is and then of course I like having the digital speedometer up here so you can just have that up as well a lot of information you can throw in the center there and it is a color display that has nice crisp lines so the um, like the zero right now it just has some nice shine to it um, it's not boring it's got like I said just some design to it that doesn't show up great on camera but it looks really really sharp in person so uh, really cool there coming over here we've got your eight inch screen now on the higher trim lines you can get a ten and a quarter inch screen with navigation this one does not have navigation so of but it, what it does have is wireless android auto and wireless apple carplay so being that it's wireless what you can do is you can get your um uh google maps and apple maps right up here and as if it's built in navigation now one thing i forgot to grab and i'm gonna go quickly grab it right now not the key but my i have props today i have more props than just the teddy bear so let me grab my it's not even mine. The standard large size iPhone something or other. What is this? I don't know what size it is. But there's a large size iPhone. So it's an older one. It does not have wireless charging. But when you have a vehicle and you have wireless Android Auto and wireless Apple CarPlay, you want to make sure that you have a wireless phone charger if you do it right. Now, I'm not saying Kia and Hyundai always get it right. Sometimes they don't offer that. But on a longer trip, you want to make sure that your phone is always charging. And of course, most of our charge pads are down in this area here, which you could still plug in for a wired connection. But this car has a wireless charge pad, and it's hard to see at first glance because it's right here. And the reason I stole this phone is this one doesn't wirelessly charge, but you can see exactly how it works. That little door holds it in place, so it's near the driver. If it was charging, and if it was a wireless charging phone that could charge, you would see this little light come on, and it just holds it perfectly in there. And if you have a larger phone, again, this is one of the larger size um, iPhones. It'll easily fit in there, and it won't go anywhere. If you have a larger phone, you could take this piece out um, that holds just the phone, and it will still sit in that general area. But it's just such a smart design because it, it's exactly where the driver would need it when they get in. You put it from your right hand into the right slot there, and you got the wireless charging right there. So that gives you the advantage of, although it doesn't have factory navigation, you're going to have a phone that's charging, and it's... Um, Android Auto, Apple CarPlay as well. So coming to here, if we could look at the radio, a couple things I want to show you. You do have the HD radio as well. So uh, if you're listening to a little bit clearer radio stations, you can get those in many areas as well. And that is kind of a nice thing to have. And then if we go to the all menus item, you can do all kinds of things. So let's just go to the setup for a second. And you can go through all kinds of uh, vehicle setup as well here. So in addition to the settings we had over there, we can talk about the custom drive mode. So why don't we talk about that for a quick second. You can set, like we said, the powertrain, you can set it for normal or sport. So what I like to do is keep this in the normal setting in my custom mode, and then the steering to the sport setting. To me, that kind of makes sense because then you've got that you know more sporty feeling steering, but not using the um, more uh, throttle, high, keep it in the high, high revs that the sport uh, setting would do. So we'll just leave it there for whoever ends up buying this car eventually. Um, so just some nice little things in the here as well. Coming down here, you do have the auto climate control. Now, the nice thing with this auto climate control is it's probably the best auto climate control system we have. It is set for 22 degrees on both sides because it's synced together. So if I move this, it's the same on both sides. Now, if I move this or if I just untap that button, uh, what I can do is make the passenger side different than the driver's side. So it's a dual zone system. But it also has this setting here in the three auto settings. Now, the three auto settings are pretty cool because... Sometimes when you get in the car and it just blasts you with the cold air in the hot summer or blasts you with a, um, a lot of fan in the winter, uh, you can turn that setting down. So right now, the way I have it is it's still set to automatically go to 22 and a half for the driver, 24 degrees for the passenger, but the fan speed will never go over a lower speed. So essentially a half speed in here. And that will keep the car a little quieter as it keeps and maintains uh maintains uh, temperature so you've got the vents here you've got the vents on the side as well there and of course um 
that auto system with the flexibility there can just allow it to just move a ton of air quickly or just slow down the air but still keep the temperature and still be automatic and that way if you override anything you can make it a manual system all you want um, but if you don't want a manual system you just set it to there and like I said, right now it works like your normal auto would, but you can slow the fan speeds down so that it never gets too obtrusive for a conversation. And it's just kind of a cool feature. All right, get the gear shift out of the way. We already showed you the two USB ports. There is a 12 volt port there. This is a nice spot to put whatever you want. You don't have to put your cell phone there because you have another spot to put your cell phone. Gear shift here is straight from the four cylinder stinger. So if you've seen that before, that's probably where you've seen it from. And while I've got it in reverse right now, you can see over here, this is a nice crystal clear backup camera. If I turn the wheel a little bit, you'll see that the yellow and red line follows where the car is basically going. The blue line, you're just gonna line that blue line up with the parking lot, parking spot that you're backing into, and the car will be exactly centered in the lane just by doing that. So super helpful, um, just basic technology there. Oh, one thing I didn't point out is this little star button here. Let's just put it in park for a second. That star button is not set up right now and you can set it up in many different ways. If we touch it, it'll give you the option to do nothing, to go to your home screen, display on and off screen, a phone projection, phone, Bluetooth, audio, that kind of stuff. Uh, what I would do is set it to phone projection because what that does is allows you to call up those Google Maps and Android Auto Maps straight as if it was just built into the system here, which I think is just a good way of doing that. So pretty cool system there as well. Now, as we're jumping down here, throw the transmission into drive and you can tap it this way and shift it up or down yourself. You do have an eight speed traditional automatic transmission. So it's not a dual clutch system or anything. It's a traditional automatic, but eight different speeds, which gives you great range. And of course, um, the 1.6 turbo engine gives you good power. Now, one thing to say about the 1.6 turbo is turbo engines, especially this turbo engine uh, with Kia and Hyundai, they give you a ton of torque down low. So you have 195 foot pounds of torque down at around well under 2000 RPM and it keeps that torque. So you have maximum torque down low. So in most cars where you have to rev it to really feel that power, you've got that pulling power, that torque down low in the rev ranges here. So combine that with an eight speed transmission, you're gonna get great fuel efficiency, but you're also going to get uh, good power. All right, some of you guys are asking a couple off topic questions. I'll get to that in a second. Coming down here, automatic parking brake. We have that right here. You just pull it up just like works like a handbrake, pull it up to turn it on, uh, push it down to turn it off if you want and it's very simple. Drive modes, this is our knob for drive modes right there, pretty easy to do. If you get this trim of car, you only have rump roasters, which are, can be turned on by uh, aiming down like that. If you get the higher trim cars, what you can do is have rump roasters down and seat ventilation when you come up. So you also have a heated steering wheel in this trim as well. So heated steering wheel, heated seats, the drive modes there. And overall, I wanna point out, these seats are very comfortable. So when you consider that this has the same engine and transmission, or at least engine anyways, not a, not transmission, but same engine as a top line Kia Seltos, you do have a little bit larger seats in here. It is a little bit more spacious vehicle than something like a Seltos. And uh, you're in that sort of Sorrento kind of feel while you do sit a little lower to the ground, it is still very spacious and you're not like on the floor in any way. Looking up, there are a number of nice features as well. So these lights right here, you can, you can see them right there. If I just, uh, if I want to turn all the lights on, I can turn all the lights on like that. But if I want to turn just one map light on, I only have to little touch the glass there and it automatically turns on and off, which is a super cool system. It just feels kind of like magic. There's no buttons there or anything. Uh, and it looks pretty cool. And of course you can also see the very large panoramic roof, which gives you great headroom, but it also gives you uh, just that natural light inside. And of course it does open. And if you didn't want glass above you, you have a powered cover that can close as well. And you would almost never know you had a sunroof at all. So I like to keep it open and uh, we'll do that for the rest of this video. We're also gonna hop in the back seat in a second and we'll get there in a second. So here we go, we got 72 people on. Let's go for 70 likes. Not even gonna hit for 72. So let's see if we can get 70 likes. Do me a favor guys, if you haven't hit the like button yet, let's all hit it together in three, two, one, hit it right now. I'm gonna go take your questions right now. Then we're gonna go back seat. We're gonna continue to talk about the rest of this car. So let's just do that right now. We gotta talk about safety with this car as well because safety systems in this car, I think are sometimes overlooked or confused for lesser systems. So uh, we'll talk about that. Someone said, how much is this? We showed you at the beginning of the video, 32 something. No, give me a second. I'm right on that page right now. I'll tell you right now. All right, so this particular one, 32,995. All right, so let's just keep the camera here for a second. I did see a couple off topic questions and I promise I will do my best to get to them in a second, but we're gonna stay on topic as best we can with this. Is this seat cloth or leather? So we're in the leather uh, seats in this one. I do believe it's the artificial leather. I have to double check that, so there we go. And um, 
I want the large screen, but would rather use Google or Maps from my phone. Yeah, so you can still use Android Auto and Apple CarPlay on the larger screen. The only difference is then you have to wire it in instead of wireless. Just the way it works. I don't know why. I don't make the plans. That's just what it is. All right. Uh, da, 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 da. There's a crazy amount of differences between the Canadian K5 and the American K5. That is true. If you are a Canadian, this, vi vi bleh, this vehicle is fully relevant to you. This video is fully relevant to you. If you're American, you're going to see some differences in the engines. Somebody says, is it a 1.5 turbo? No, it's a 1.6 turbo uh, engine, 181 horsepower. What is it, 180 or 180? 180 horsepower, 195 foot-pounds of torque. So, um, and it's a really good engine. It's, um, I know a lot of people are doing these smaller turbos and sometimes they feel like little wimpy little engines. This engine's very, very good. I really like it. Um, it works really well with this car and Speed and power-wise, because of the aerodynamics, because of the lightweight of the car, you're getting the kind of um, performance out of a larger SUV with a bigger engine, but you're not paying for the fuel efficiency or paying for the fuel penalty. Somebody asked for fuel efficiency numbers, so let's just show them to you right now. 9.2 in the city and 7 on the highway, so overall 8.2. But that's really good mileage for a mid-size all-wheel drive vehicle. And when I say mid-size, it really is competing with those mid-size SUVs for interior space. So um, just a very good uh, blend in my mind because of that all-wheel drive system especially. Someone says, can I get in Hunter Green? I don't think you can actually right now. Uh, did they drop the hybrid with the change to the K5 from the Optima? Yes, there is no longer a hybrid um, in the K5. So now you're looking at hybrids in the Sorentos um, from the Optima or into the Nero. So the Nero will be redesigned as well. Somebody asked me earlier in the video, when's the Nero coming out, the next generation Nero? Uh, probably the end of this year is the next generation. So, uh, all right. Somebody's asking about a Mazda 3. I have no idea about the Mazda 3 right now. We're not uh, talking about a Mazda 3. Is there an option for red interior? Not in Canada or not in this trim? Not in these trims for sure. I've seen red interior on pictures, but I thought that was American. It could be, yeah, I think that's wrong. Um, Hyundai wants to go total EV by 2025. What its key is planned for being their sister companies? Well, Hyundai's not going to go full EV by 2025. That's not their goal, but they are moving full EV and so is Kia. They are going to be leaders in that. Uh, I think you'll see some of the EVs coming out. The Ionic 5 that's already come out, the EV6 that's about to come out here. Uh, they will be leading vehicles here. Okay. Thanks for answering my sunroof in the extreme cold question on Instagram. Yeah, no problem. So uh, happy to help you guys. And like I said, guys, if you want to follow me on Instagram, I'm going to have some more polls for you guys uh, that you guys can sort of guide these videos. So if you want to follow me on Instagram, that's the way you can do it. And um, yeah, just something that if you want to keep uh, following me that way, we had some interaction there the other day, and that's part of what brought some of these videos. And we'll try to keep doing that if you guys want to follow me there. All right, let's go around and show you the rear seat, and then we'll come back to, the, um, to some other things. We're going to talk about some safety as well. So rear seat, let's jump in. Because if you're buying this car... I think you're going to want a larger vehicle like this because of passenger space. Now, that front passenger seat is a long ways back. Sometimes we do that when we're detailing or preparing a car, um, or sometimes they just come like that from the factory. Let me jump in here. Now, it is a little bit lower than a regular SUV. You see, I kind of ducked my head there to get in. Regular SUV would probably have a tiny bit more headroom as well. What I will say is I'm six feet tall, and I got plenty of room here. Like, it looks like only an inch or so, but it's probably a couple inches easy over my head. My legs are flush on the seat, and that's a big thing that you don't always get in these sedans. So comfortable here, and of course, knee room, a six-footer sitting behind a six-footer. You've got all kinds of space there as well. So if you were going on a trip across the country, you could do that in this. This would not be an issue here. Somebody said something about the hump. I don't know if I saw it there correctly. How bad is the hump? Pretty bad. <laughs> it is an all-wheel drive car, so it does have a... Um, a uh, drive shaft through here, which means if you're sitting in the middle seat here, which there is an armrest here as well, uh, you are going to have to spread your legs on either side. It's not just a, like a one or two inch bump. It's a, you know, eight inch or so uh, bump. It's a tall bump because it has a drive shaft running through there for the all wheel drive. You do have two USB ports back here. And as you can see, you have a pocket. What I really like is the plastic back seats. If you have kids, just take a damp cloth, wipe this down and it's all clean again. No issues there. Uh, let's just come back around to this side. We're going to put the center armrest down. And as we do that, sorry for the terrible cam work, it's my specialties, bad cam work. Uh, we do have cup holders in here and you do have um, some space there. So it does fall where you would want it to be on your uh, arm. If we shut the door here again, that wood trim carries on. There is a soft touch armrest on the armrest here, which is not always soft touch. You have some piano black trim here. It's a very comfortable, spacious car to sit back and relax in and be very comfortable. If you only need to take four passengers, 
everywhere, this car will work fine for you. If you need to take a fifth passenger, it's fine to take that fifth passenger legally. They'll be fine for a while, uh, but their legs will, again, have to be spread, spread out over that hump. Obviously, six passengers or above, you're looking at an SUV. So that's that. And again, we do have a panoramic roof here, which it's really hard to film my sight line, but this panoramic roof, when you can see out of it, it just makes the car feel so airy and open and you can see stuff. If you're driving downtown in a big city, you can see the skyscrapers. If you're sitting there in the country, you can look at the stars through the roof. It's pretty cool. It just gives a really unique feeling back here. And that panoramic roof is kind of unique. You don't see that in a lot of cars. Um, and yeah, especially at this price point. So jumping out, let's talk about a few of the safety features. And uh, I've talked about these before just last week with different vehicles. So if you're regular with us, you've heard this before, but in case you're not a regular with us, the window on this car is not very clean. I do apologize for that. Uh, but you can see that sort of camera up there, that sort of V area, that is a camera looking forward. When we talk about safety features on this car, this car has a number of them and even just convenience features like cruise control, smart cruise control. So there is a radar plate below the license plate there. You can see it down there and the camera up there. So things like smart cruise control, um, this car can keep its distance from the car in front of you and it can sense that with the radar plate. When it has something like the camera up there, the camera allows it to see lane markers and kind of, you know, keep you centered in the lane. So if you just brush out to the edge of the lane and there's a lane marker here, what it will do is it will um, beep at you and also kind of nudge you back into the lane, which is super handy if you're not paying attention or if you're playing with the screen in the center of the car. But the lane follow assist can also be turned on. The lane follow assist allows you to keep centered in the lane. And when you're doing a lot, long trip, when you've got the smart cruise control keeping the distance in front of you, you've got the lane follow assist keeping you uh, in the lane and following the lane, like right dead center in the lane, that's really helpful. But that camera also does a few other things. It can have forward collision avoidance. So it can see the vehicle in front of you and then this radar plate can measure the distance between the vehicle in front of you, and it is capable of stopping to avoid a collision if you're not paying attention. So it's capable of doing that. It also has what they call junction turning avoidance or junction collision avoidance, excuse me. So it can use the camera, can use the radar plate. And if you're sitting here and you're about to turn in front of me, and I'm looking at that light ahead of me and it's about to go yellow, and you decide to clear the intersection and I decide I'm instead of stopping, I'm gonna burst through. Well, as you're looking out your driver's window, you're looking where you're about to head, you're not paying attention to me and you turn in front of me. It's one of the most common dangerous collisions in town. This car has junction collision avoidance. So it is capable of breaking the car to avoid that collision where I'm running that yellow light and you're trying to clear the intersection. It's capable of avoiding that. So you've got those safety features and safety functions. You've also got blind, uh, blind keeping or blind keeping, blind spot collision avoidance. So that means again, you can be warned of something in your blind spot, but it can also break that outside wheel to nudge you back in if you're gonna have an imminent collision there. It all has rear cross traffic alert. So when you're backing up out of a parking spot and there's a minivan parked beside you and you can't see through the minivan, as soon as you nudge the back end of this car out, that radar plate can see me about to cross your path and it will warn you in the camera or in the uh, rear view camera and in the dash and by beeping. Speaking of beeping, it also has parking sensors on the back. It has parking camera and the parking sensors. So that camera, of course, can help you see things. But let's say your kid parked his tricycle right around here and you're just zipping out of your driveway, not paying attention. Well, you will have beepers to tell you exactly how close you are. Very few cars are now coming with those backup beepers as well as the backup camera. Of course, backup camera is required by law, but you're not really always seeing that. So let's turn on the headlights for a second and talk about them because that is another safety feature that we don't talk about all that often. All right, turn the car to the on position. Now I say we don't talk about it. I talk about headlights all the time. So the headlights in this car are, whoops, there we go. Uh, there we go. All right, so headlights in this car, they are HID head, or sorry, uh, LED headlights. LED headlights give you a nice white color. For whatever reason, this camera doesn't uh, do a good job on this wall of making them look white. It looks very yellow, but they are very bright white. They're close in color to a daylight color. So you right away, your brain can react because it recognizes what it sees because it's familiar. It doesn't have to interpret what it sees uh, with these colors. And it also, speaking of safety with these lights, they are an automatic high beam system. So you can see right down here, if we come down here, you've got a very bright light there. And, whoops, camera's failing here. You can do a camera, you're good. All right, there we go. Uh, so very bright light down there and sharp cutoff, but you can drive in the country and it can automatically turn on your high beams and automatically turn your high beams off. If you enter the city, it'll automatically keep them off. The other cool thing, if you're watching from somewhere other than North America, these lights here are white 
outside of North America, but they are amber inside North America, which is pretty cool to see. You do have signal lights on the mirrors here as well. As we come around to the back, you've got the same idea here with your LED lights in the back. You can see they've got some real design here. Kia and Hyundai do really good job, do a really good job with their lighting now. Now, one thing on the Forte, we've got a Forte here today, on the lower trims anyways, actually I believe on the higher trims too, they have a mirrored finish behind this red thing. Those are not lights, it's just a mirrored finish. finish. But you can see they kind of mimic the K5 in appearance. The K5 is cooler because they have actual lighting through there. So the step up in appearance in the K5 from the Forte is noticeable, right? This looks like a higher end car and it really is, but it's not a massive step up in styling. Speaking of just one little styling feature, we've done this for a while now. We've had this sort of line come up here and come down here. And instead of stopping like a traditional car right down here, they carry it through to here. Well, in the Optima, they carried it through to there and stopped. On the K5, they carry it right around here and it kind of gives a really cool look in person. It's hard to see on um, film here. Now, I recommend just getting a light tint on the rear windows and it kind of blends that whole roof to back line all of them together and it looks really, really sharp. So, all wheel drive, great safety, great comfort, long trunk floor, so plenty of trunk space in here. This really is a replacement for a small or mid-sized crossover. You're gonna get better fuel mileage, you're gonna get good performance, and you're gonna get all the space you need. I love the K5. So what we're gonna do here is gonna go back to your questions and see if there's anything I can take care of. Uh, we were aiming for 70 likes, we hit 77. So what we could do, if you want, we could hit 100. There's 23 of you right now that have not hit the button to like this video. If you hit it, we could hit 100 likes. So I'll leave it to you. I'm not saying you have to, but let's see what we got here. Safety equipment is crazy on vehicles these days. Remember when the outside mirrors were the options? <laughs> yeah, that's right. The uh, driver's side mirror was standard. The passenger side mirror was an option. That's what they used to do with safety features. So safety features nowadays is good. And the other thing to keep in mind is crash safety standards. Kia and Hyundai, they own the um, steel manufacturing process pretty much from start to finish, which means they can put more high strength steel into these vehicles. That creates a safer vehicle. It creates a lighter vehicle in some cases. And they, by putting more high strength steel in there, that usually is very expensive, but they can, because they control the whole process, they can cut that cost down well, without cutting the quality down, which means you have a very safe vehicle overall. You can tune the suspension better because you've got that stiffness in there. And what that does is we always think of safety as crash safety. If this vehicle gets into a crash, it's very safe, but it also has all of the crash avoidance stuff, which in my mind is what I would rather have because I don't need a vehicle that's gonna save my life as much as, I mean, that's important, don't get me wrong, but I really don't wanna have an accident at all. And having those crash avoidance systems, um, I'm not expecting to die in a modern vehicle in many in-town collisions, but what I am expecting is that if that new vehicle can avoid those collisions altogether, my day is not inconvenience and I didn't inconvenience somebody else's day as well. All right, uh, have they reached plans or thoughts on uh, the radar plate in the winter? No, so a lot of cars have the radar plate down low in the winter and if it does get covered in slush, it uh, becomes inactive for some of those features. Um, that is not something I'm hearing of them redesigning. It is just something that us Canadians get to deal with or people in uh, snowy weather areas. And it is consistent across uh, pretty much every brand right now. Uh, turn signal, turn on turn signals, I can do that for you. Let's do that really quickly. Do on the left side turn signal. Left side turn signal is on. Of course, you have it in the mirror there. You can see it right there. And this camera has a tough time adapting to the amber color here, but that whole thing does uh, does flash and it looks super cool in person. Very tough to uh, film. And of course, on the back here, you have just the amber light inside of there. Not LED back here. I don't know why, it's just what they do. Uh, LED everywhere else. So um, there we go. All right, any plans to do car buying tips video? A lot of you guys have asked me about car buying tips video and the easiest answer is to buy a car from us. Um, I don't like when they, I see these uh, market adjustment pricing. We don't do that here. I don't like some of the tactics that other dealers use. We just don't do those here. Um, I get to train our sales staff here a little bit on some of the things that we do. Not everything, but I get to have a say in some of the things we do. Um, so I basically train them to sell to you like I would train me to sell to my mother. You know, I show you the car. Here's what it is. Here's all the answers you need. Um, we sometimes help you with some of the questions you should ask, uh, like the customers with some of the questions they should ask. Uh, because if you don't ask the right questions, you may not get the right car for you or the right deal or whatever it is you're looking for. Um, but I'm not sure that I, I'm the, it's the right spot. I don't know if anybody will take me seriously as a dealer uh, telling you how to buy a car, especially since just buy from us and I can guarantee you that you'll have a good experience. 
All right, can you demo the front seat legroom, which I understand is 46 inches, which is crazy huge. Okay. Um, I don't know how, so I'm about six feet tall. I don't know how long my legs are exactly. Somebody says they're 46 inches, so um, the legroom here. So, okay, so there I am comfortably on the gas pedal here, going back, going back. I'm still touching the gas, okay. So I cannot floor the gas, I can only go halfway down in the gas pedal here. Um, break, I could get pressure there, but I literally cannot touch the floor without stretching my leg out. So seat on the back here, um, size 11 feet. I can't, I don't know how to film this. Come on camera, there we go. Um, that's as far as I can hit. So I cannot touch the floor. I'm two, three inches from the floor. So there I'm touching the floor and there is where I am. I can go underneath the brake pedal, but can't touch. So is legroom good? Um, yeah, legroom's pretty good. If you're really tall, like really, really tall, I just put the seat down here and you can put it back a little bit here. Like I have like a foot of space up here. Um, I can't, I can maybe one third throttle right now. Now, if I put my hip point back, yeah, actually, you know what? With the seat lowered and back before I had it up, but when I lowered it, which is what you would do if you're really tall, I think I can press this, the accelerator 10, 20% out of the full, uh, right to the floor. So yeah, if you're tall, this is a good car for you. A lot of people think you need a big SUV. That's not the case. This car was built for the American market. Americans as a, in general are larger than other parts of the world. Um, that's a stereotype, but it's also true. Um, so yeah, it, it definitely fits large people. And somebody saying 46 inches of legroom. Sure. That sounds about right. I don't know what that means. Could the rear lights be non led in order to generate a little heat to melt the snow during the winter months? I don't think it's about that. I think it's more about the resistance. Um, LED lights need, they don't have a lot of resistance. So you usually have to put a resistor in there. I wonder if they just tackle that by putting a, um, LED or a non led bulb in there. All right. Not sure if you answered this already. Uh, something about ambient lighting. Where'd it go? Do the side doors have ambient lighting? Not on this trim that not on this trim at all that I'm aware of. Okay. Uh, there we go. Does this, does this have the same stock speakers as the Forte? No. So this will be a different speaker system than the Forte. I will say, now I haven't tested the speakers in the 2022 Forte, which has been redesigned. Uh, from the K5 to the Sorento to the Carnival, the lower trim speakers in this car, so the base level speakers in those cars, all of them are excellent. Um, not top line Bose audio, Harman Kardon audio systems, but very good. They're, they're a step up from what the base systems used to be. Uh, so I will say that's very good. Does this have the same? Yeah, so we talked about that. So yeah, they're very good speakers there. Um, overall, this is just such a, in my opinion, overlooked car in the lineup. So here's the thing. Kia and Hyundai, they do, or Kia, excuse me, they don't provide us with a whole lot of K5s, you know, just to sit in inventory. It's in their minds, a low volume vehicle. If I ran the company, this would be a much higher volume vehicle. I think people will buy this car if they see it, if they try it, and it's an excellent um, vehicle. So if you're interested in this vehicle, we have one. We, uh, I don't know if this one's currently for sale, but we can get them. I do encourage you to put it on your shopping list because I think it's gonna be great for people who want a lot of space, need a lot of cargo space. <coughs> Excuse me, they want all wheel drive. Uh, there's so many reasons to get this vehicle. And if it works for you, then it works for you. If it doesn't, hey, that's cool. We'll do another video tomorrow to show you another video, another vehicle that could be good for you. So I want to thank everyone for watching. It's been fun. We're back here tomorrow. We'll have a Hyundai vehicle tomorrow and we're here all week. So thanks everybody for joining us. It's been fun. We'll talk to you again soon.